Hello Libra, Amy Energy here with your weekly tarot message. If you have not, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to be notified whenever I make a new video. This week we're working with the Wheel of Change Tarot. I'm pulling out 12 cards for you, one card for each house in the zodiac okay you do not have to be fluent in astrology um for this reading okay we are simply going to use you know the setup of the wheel and the house themes to guide our intuition here so we have the queen of wands on the bottom of the deck Beautiful energy. We're going to also use the pride tarot here. Okay, so we have each house and its opposite. And with the pride tarot, we will pull one card to see the common goal of both polarities. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it here. All right, first house, we have the moon. Seventh house, we have the five of wands. So the first house really has to do with the self, okay, our immediate environment. And I do feel like we could be a very intuitive person, okay, or we are in this moment, okay. I feel like we could be you know, a bit confused about what's going on in our life, okay? But it is an auspicious time. Here in the seventh house, we could be having some conflicts here. The seventh house deals with our partnerships, our relationships, and even our enemies, right? So with the five of wands showing up in that house, I am sensing that we are having some conflicts here. Now, both of these energies are really pushing you toward really, I feel, standing in your power and taking action, okay? With the King of Pentacles, we are taking action on our stability, okay? Or maybe even to be there for family. But I feel both these energies are really pushing us, Libra, into this very capable energy, okay? So we're going to keep going and see how the rest of this reading is unfolding. Now, in the second house, we have the Three of Wands. In the eighth house, we have the Hierophant. Okay, so the second house, dealing with our values and our resources, okay, we're sort of, I feel maybe in a bit of a chaotic energy right now, but it's very magical, so we really love this card, right? There is inspiration here, there is so much possibility with the stars in the background, okay, and there's passion with the um, fire here, right? Okay. But we are having to make some sort of plans for the future here, especially with the Hierophant in our eighth house, dealing with, you know, other people's resources. It can, you know, be death, sex, rebirth, transformation. But in this energy with the Hierophant, okay, we could be dealing with, um, you know, with it being other people's money and the Hierophant, we could be dealing with, like, taxes, something like that, okay? So that could be very well why we are in this Three of Wands energy, right? Because who, like, resonates with paying taxes, right? I mean, certainly not you because you're the Empress, and the Empress doesn't like to pay taxes so that America can bomb other countries and do other ridiculous shit okay the empress is not loving that energy at all okay but whatever pressure is happening right now in the eighth house 
and in the second house, right? There's pressure in both. But it's much more heavy in the eighth, right? I mean, this is a very heavy energy. Um, but the, there is a common goal here. And that goal is for you to get some sort of assistance here. Okay, so I feel like, you know, this is connected with this King of Pentacles, and I kind of knew it would. That's why I moved out of the first to seventh pretty quickly, because I, I knew that we were going to get a little more insight. You know, this is why we're being pushed to, you know, take, ignition, take initiative in some way, okay, because... We really need to understand something here about our money. Like, there's a lesson that we really have to learn about our money and how our abundance comes to us. And, you know, we're connected to love energy. So our most valuable resources here, the Empress is very earthy, but do you see a pentacle in sight? Because I don't, okay? The Empress... Her value is so much greater than what money could ever get to, okay? Whew. Third house and ninth house, okay? In the third house, we have the eight of swords, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me. I feel like we could be having a bit of trouble with the way we are communicating that might have not been the best way to articulate that but the third house is all about communication our local community and I feel like we're holding ourselves back here in a certain sense okay the chariot is over here in the ninth house which is our house of spirituality higher learning so I feel look at this chariot too I mean is this deck not gorgeous it's amazing, okay? And this chariot, you know, is connected to everything, like, right? You see these connections. Like, you're connected to everything. And your intention is very powerful here in the ninth house, but I feel like for some reason, and, you know, could be any number of reasons, we are holding ourselves back a little bit here with the Eight of Swords in our third house, okay? Let's see. Common Goal, the Magician, okay? So, you know, in your environment here, look, we got the crashed window, right? There's the baseball where it came in. Okay, so someone could be crashing your window or, you know, Otherwise, you know, this could be life throwing a curveball at you, right? And, you know, in a certain sense, you, you feel a bit broken, but there's still flowers growing here. So, you know, the eight is all about evolution. And sometimes we don't evolve until we have to, right? We don't really claim our abundance until we have to do it. If we were comfortable, we might just stay comfortable forever. But if we struggle, it you know, this struggle here in our seventh house, right, this five of wands, you know, the fives are conflicts, but look at how gorgeous this card is, right? You know, and I love that about this deck because, you know, the fives are conflict. But just because you're having a conflict doesn't mean, you know, sometimes the conflicts are the most juiciest moments with the most, like, nutrients, right? Nutrients for life and not, like, you know, the food kind, like the spiritual kind, okay? Maybe you're not following me. I don't even know if I am anymore, okay? But the common goal here with both these energies is to for you to see that you have everything you need, your new opportunity, it's here, okay? You are, I feel, you are a very spiritual person, okay? You have a very spiritual 
vision for your life and it's you know really just about believing it and using the tools that you have and you know taking advantage of this opportunity that you actually do have right now even if it looks like a smashed window it's an opportunity okay fourth house and tenth house all right, so the fourth house, we're dealing with our home, our roots, okay? And it's transforming, okay? And I feel that because I'm kind of feeling like the three and four very connected here. Like, uh, and in the fact that I feel they're both transforming right now. Oh, that devil wanted to come out. Dang. All right. But I just feel like, our home life right now is completely transforming, okay? And we're getting rid of every single thing that does not serve us right now, okay? Because we have to really put the work into something here in the 10th house with the eight of discs. And, you know, I really love, again, this card, right? Because there's all the cobwebs there and it's like, you know, it's almost like you have to clean the cobwebs off your gifts here so that people can see them, okay, so that people can find you for whatever it is that you do, okay? Maybe this is polishing up the resume. Maybe this is, you know, updating that Etsy store. Whatever you do, whatever you want to be known for, you have to clean out the cobwebs, okay? What is your true joy? What do you want to be known for in this life? Okay, because that's what you want to put your work into. All right, the common goal of both these energies is the lovers, okay? So I do feel really beautifully here. You know, I feel like you could be a spiritual teacher here with the hermit. I see you working in one-on-one -on -one partnerships, okay? And you could be manifesting this right now with the five of wands in your seventh house. You know, this is the energy. I hope you're not manifesting an eclipse season, okay? But, you know, this is what I'm feeling. It's, it could be a conflict right now pulling in these customers, okay? However, there is something happening, right? Like these transformation that you're going through in your home, the work you're putting in right now, cleaning out those cobwebs, getting in touch with your passions, okay? It's all of this is trying to pull you into the direction of the lovers, which I feel with the hermit on the bottom is you really helping people um you know, maybe even doing tarot, something like that. I could see that for you. Okay, but I see you like doing one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, that's why with one-on-one -on -one you could be, you know, doing any type of reading or therapy, like that type of thing. I feel like that's, you know, or even just, you know, this could be anything right? It doesn't have to be those things. This could be anything but strong relationship. Strong, you know, I'm not feeling like a love relationship with this. I'm really not, but I'm feeling like a very, um, I'm just feeling one-on-one -on -one relationships, right? So it can be in any type of field that you're interested in, whatever your true passion is, okay? I'm not, you know, you already know what that is. So this is just the universe is pushing you to find the partnerships or the clients that really work for you, okay? We have the Knight of Swords here in the fifth house, okay? The fifth house is creativity, children, fun and games, romance okay and we have the two of cups in the 11th house which is the house of society right of larger friend groups so libra this is really beautiful and this is 
really reiterating, right, what I was saying here. Okay, the two of cups and the lovers are coming out, but it's where they're coming out that's really informing the energy on them, right? Between the 4th and the 10th and between the 5th and the 11th, okay? But this isn't in the romance part. It's in, you know, our 11th house where we just have humanity as a whole, you know, society. This is bigger. And that's why I'm feeling, again, like you're meant to help a great deal of people through one-on-one -on -one situations right? Even if it's just friendships, right? That's really important. And in the fifth house here with the Knight of Swords, I really feel, you know, like there is something that you're really an expert at, that you're taking initiative in, and it's a creative endeavor here, okay? But it's, it's not just a creative endeavor. It's a creative endeavor that took some skills to learn, like, you know, this isn't something that everybody has the knowledge to create, right? You have it, and you have the temperance card. So there's something that you have creatively to offer people here in the 11th house, and both of these energies are pushing you to really get into your art, get into your craft, understand who you are, and create, right? Create it. Do it. Like, it's really beautiful. The fool is on the bottom too. So it's just like jump in, do it, trust yourself. Okay, you have you have the knowledge. Wow, really beautiful. Now getting into the sixth house here. We have the ten of discs. And in the twelfth house, we have the four of swords. Okay. So, I mean, we love to see the sixth house, the ten of discs, okay? So, I feel like, you know, the sixth house is our daily routines and, you know, our health. So, we have, having the ten of discs there is really beautiful because this is a card of great health, um, financial success community okay look at all these drums on here you know I just I really love this I feel like we're really able to like appreciate the goodness in life but participate in it right like it's almost like I'm feeling this energy like you know I don't know this might sound like too much for me to explain but it's almost like the energy of like if you've ever worked for like capitalism and you have to work 40 hours a week and have no life and um you know you always see like things going on and you're like wow I wish I could have a life and that I didn't have to sell my whole entire soul and every waking hour to capitalism that would be really great Okay, um, and I feel like you're finally getting to do that, right? You're getting that here with the 10 of discs. Like, you're able to just, like, soak up life, soak up your community, like, get all that goodness, right? And the Queen of Wands also very connected to her community, okay? Four of Swords here is in the 12th house. So I do feel like, you know, there is something here. Like, you're not seeing the point right now, okay? Like, everything, like, you might know a lot of things, but you don't know exactly what the goal is right now, right? So if you think you know what the goal is, I feel like you don't. You just have to kind of flow with this energy, right? It's not something that you can process because the Four of Swords energy is in your 12th house. So the Four of Swords is where we process information, but the Twelfth House is, you know, our subconscious. So, you know, we could be, it's almost like our processing of information is not something that we're, like, actually consciously participating in. 
Okay. Um, but yeah, this is very important here. The common goal of both of these energies is the four of pentacles. Okay. So the universe really wants you to be stable and safe so that you can participate in all of this. So, you know, it is like this, it's interesting. It's like the universe, I feel like their goal is that you'll have enough, but that you won't have excess because the universe wants you to have to use your gifts, right? The universe wants you to be safe, of course. But the universe here, like the common goal with it being the Four of Pentacles is like for you to have to be, you know, a little bit frugal and resourceful, right? Because when you are resourceful, you create magic, okay? But you might not do it if you weren't uncomfortable enough. So with the four of pentacles, I'm, I'm really liking this energy because I feel like the universe is going to give you what you need, but it is not giving you any extra because you, you have to cultivate this community and like this juicy goodness, okay? So Libra, let's go ahead and get some additional messages here from our ancestors and spirit guides okay we have the air male oracle here by sarah stacy i highly recommend that you check out her etsy i have the link below in my description box okay amazing oracle decks highly recommend my favorite hands down Okay, let's go ahead. I want to know a little bit more about this first and seventh axis. Axis. Sorry, Libra. I can't say axis. I've messed it up in every video. I just can't say it. Okay. Rise again, coming out. Okay, so if you're facing any conflicts in relationships, okay, or you know, if things aren't clear right now, you know, maybe you don't even know who you are. Like, you could be questioning things like this, okay? But you will rise again. This energy is just pushing you to really, you know, just I'm feeling like it's interesting because even though it's the king of pentacles, I'm not feeling it connected to money. Um, and I just feel like, you know, I just keep hearing, like, smart-ass feminist t-shirts <laughs> in my head. So that's why I'm not, I'm stumbling on what to say. Because I'm like, you know, I don't want to put any gender in this reading or associate this King of Pentacles with any gender here. Um, but I do feel like, you know, we're rising again. We will rise again. We might be in a transitional phase. We might be in this five of wands, right? There could be some conflict when it comes to our relationships. Okay, but we're really going to be responsible here. Like both these energies want us to take responsibility in a way here. Okay, but it's almost like, I'm not. It's interesting. I'm sorry, Libra. I'm just getting like a. A confusing message here. Let me get one more. I just want to get a little clarity because I really feel. There's something I just can't quite articulate here. This, with this goal, with this King of Pentacles. Take flight. Take flight. Interesting. Okay. 
So I feel like there's a situation we have to move on from with this takes light coming out. We have to move on from a situation and I'm not feeling like the take flight is like actually taking a flight. I feel like this is like a baby bird taking its first fly out of the nest, right? I feel like, you know, you have to know that you are worthy for this new beginning. Okay, really, truly. I'm going to move on. If you want to book a personal, you can always do that at amyenergy.online, okay? Sometimes the message is here because there's so many different energies that I'm reading. It can um, be less clear than in a personal reading. Okay, so now I want to get some more here, angels and ancestors, for the 4th and 10th house for Libra. All right, Get Funky is coming out, okay? So, mm, I love this. Get funky and slow down is on the bottom. Okay, so, I mean, I'm feeling this. I feel with this transformation here happening in your home life, it's, you know, it's a fun transformation, right? We're, tr we're moving into a space of more trust in ourself, in the universe, and so I feel like that's making our spirit just a lot more fun and goofy maybe, okay? Especially when we're at home with our family. So that's, that's really nice, okay? And I do feel like that energy, that positivity, like, that you are cultivating whenever you get into this energy, like, Yes, that's going to push you into knowing that you can actually help other people. Okay? Now, I want to get also some more here for the 5th house and the 11th house. Okay, well, there we go. Dive deep is coming out. Okay? So, yeah, I do feel like this is deep, right? Very deep. even though we're very intelligent, right? So we're mixing that, right? Because we're incredibly intelligent, but we are also incredibly deep. And so I do feel like having that good balance, being able to have both of those ingredients, right? That makes you a very powerful person, okay? And so I feel like that, combined with any um, meetings that you're having with friends or clients here is really pushing you to honor that and see that in yourself, okay? So, oh, we have be direct now on the bottom. Be direct. Yeah, be very deliberate. All right, let's get us one more card here over this reading from the Sacred Destiny Oracle. All right, we have Illumination and Gateway coming out for you. Embracing is on the bottom of the deck. Let's read from the book, because I want to. Illumination. Mist rising on alpine lake. The sacred landscape wants you to know. The upward spiraling mist rising in the mountains suggests that those in the realm of spirit, your spirit protectors, ancestors, and guardians are close at hand, assisting you on your upward journey of illumination. They are protecting you and supporting you. Your spiritual life is expanding by leaps and bounds. Even if you can't see what's ahead, spirit is close at hand. If you draw this card, trust your heart and what you feel more than what you see and what you think. And you will be guided in a wondrous direction. Okay, now we want to also read Gateway, Enchanted Valley. 
Okay, Enchanted Valley. The sacred landscape wants you to know. Magic is afoot. Wondrous events are unfolding. Profound revelations and inner illuminations are close at hand. It is now much easier to manifest your dreams. This is an excellent time to take on your visions for your future. A small amount of action now will generate much bigger results. Gateways to spirit are opening, and there are places where the veil is especially thin. Fairies and elves are supporting you. Wonders are blossoming in your life. Watch for them. Open your heart to hollow, holy, magical energy. The more you become aware of the small small marbles in your life, the more they will grow in magnitude. Okay. Embracing. All right, we're going to read the bottom of the deck to embracing flood plains. The sacred landscape wants you to know sometimes life overflows with emotions, which can feel uncomfortable. However, the ensuing result of this discomfort can be of great value, perhaps arising from an unseen or unknown source. You get this card when emotions are seemingly overflowing or not flowing at all. Cherish the overflow of emotions and embrace the times that seem murky. For your inner floodplains are being replenished, and as a result, there will be great spiritual and physical expansion. Embrace all your emotions. When you do so, greater prosperity and fertility will flow into your life. Alternatively, if your emotions have been blocked, this is a time to explore and experience them. Okay, Libra, I'm going to leave it there. If you want to book a personal, you may do so at amyenergy.online. Follow me on Instagram at amyenergy. You can donate to the channel also on Venmo or Cash App at amyenergy on both. Make sure you definitely follow me on TikTok because I will be going live, so you'll have an opportunity to have your questions answered there. I am at amyenergy3 on TikTok. But most importantly, have a wonderful week. I love you. Take care.